Dr. E. Donald Thomas won the Nobel Prize for his development of bone marrow transplantation. His pioneering efforts resulted in revolutionary new medical procedures used to treat and cure tens of thousands of leukemia and lymphoma patients every year. The experiment of human marrow transplantation taught us not just a technique that is curative for thousands of individuals, but really it taught us how the immune system can accept or reject grafts, and it taught us how the immune system can get rid of malignancies. Dr. Thomas began his research in bone marrow biochemistry in 1947. By 1955, he had developed techniques to obtain human marrow cells and prepare them for safe transplantation into patients. At that time, you know, uh, the diagnosis of leukemia was a sentence of death. Always in two or three or four weeks or months. Uh, and it was obvious that uh, this was an area where, where there could be some improvement. To me, that was an open opportunity for research. We knew that leukemia was very sensitive to radiation and high doses of drugs. So the idea was, why not treat a patient with very high doses of drug, enough to destroy their bone marrow, and uh, to transplant bone marrow from someone else. It wasn't uh, just developing a, a new technique, but it was developing a new technique that the vast majority of hematologists and, and oncologists said was uh, uh, impossible, um, or worse, that it was unethical uh, and it was immoral to, to, to try it. One had to have enormous strength and, and belief to persist. In those days, the chemotherapy of leukemia had not been developed as well. And it was being developed at approximately the same time. Uh, so there was no alternative. If, if we had one out of 30 patients who lived a year, that to us was highly significant. The critics would say, that, well, the 29 patients died, so this is terrible. It, it was a very discouraging time for Don, of course, but every now and then there would be one patient that would do well, even if eventually they died. Don kept building step by step, and then it's just sheer joy when you see somebody walk out of the hospital assuming their life again, and it, it's probably one of the greatest feelings you can have. Well, I think Don is the epitome of the Dr. Schweitzer, you know, the dedicated doctor whose only mission in life is to bring some new insight to patient care. He's that simple in a way. We oftentimes were depressed because an experiment just didn't work out again. And so Don, you know, kept faith actually and said, well, just try again. <laughs> so we, we tried again. Having a steady hand at the rudder at the time was, was very important. I actually asked uh, many, many colleagues to give me a funny story about Don, and we all agreed there are no funny stories about Don. None. He had a mission. There was nothing funny about it. A lot of people have said if, if Don's the uh, father of bone marrow transplantation, then surely Dottie is the mother. She always was there quietly at Don's side, keeping records, correcting papers. I, I suspect that many of the intellectual insights had a lot of Dottie's influence in them. Uh, I think it's, it's almost impossible to separate the two because the two were always together. We were both in the University of Texas, and uh, I was waiting tables at the girls' dormitory. And when I went out of the dormitory that morning, lo and behold, it had snowed in Austin, Texas. And uh, first thing I knew, a young lady that I, that I didn't know 
hit me in the face with a snowball. So I had to catch her and roll her in the snow and so on. And that's how I met Dottie. Well, actually, I was not aiming at Don. I was aiming at someone else, but I never could throw straight, so I hit him. <laughs> In 1990, Dr. Thomas's years of groundbreaking research in bone marrow transplantation and immunology received international recognition with recipiency of the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a big jump from medical school where you're learning to do what has already been shown to be beneficial. But as soon as you think you might be able to improve on what's being done, then it becomes a real a burden and at the same time a challenge. To me, that, that was the most exciting thing. Dr. Thomas's research is the genesis of immunotherapy, the harnessing of the body's immune system to effectively fight not only cancer, but other diseases as well. Every cancer center would aspire to create new approaches to curing cancer, but very few have had that good fortune. Don and Dottie's work really created a completely new paradigm for uh, cancer treatment that we continue to exploit to this day. One of the major legacies of marrow transplantation will be not just the development of a curative technique today, but it will be the establishment of immunotherapy as a technique that will be able to cure thousands of patients of many different diseases in the future. And then ultimately, we hope we're going to create new immunotherapies for cancer that will you know, conceivably eradicate the disease. That could be the long-term legacy. Dr. E. Donald Thomas changed the world forever by offering hope where there once was none. Today, more than 50,000 patients worldwide undergo bone marrow or stem cell transplants every year. The benefits of his decades of work will reach far into the future as hundreds of thousands of cancer patients become cancer survivors. And the spirit of his vision will continue to be reflected in the hearts and efforts of everyone at Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center.